Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. This video is a quick hip flexibility yoga workout specifically made for golfers, but helpful for anybody with hips. We're going to go through a few beginner friendly yoga postures focused on improving your hip flexibility. I'm going to guide you through every aspect of the technique. Make sure you're feeling the exercise in the right ways. And at the end of this, you're going to feel better in your hips, your back and your entire lower body. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Manful Yoga if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Here we go. We're gonna get started in a low lunge with your right leg forward. If you have blocks, they can be helpful. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. So right leg forward, release your back knee to the ground, tuck your back toes. If you have any sort of discomfort in your left knee here on the ground, you're welcome to put a pillow or any sort of pad underneath that knee. Make sure that your toes are facing straight forward here. Lift your ribs up away from your hips. So we want to get a lot of space from your mid thighs up through your ribs. And then as you exhale, I want you to sink into this lunge. Push your right hip toward your right heel. Squeeze your glutes. So we want to make your hips active here and that's going to help you increase your flexibility more quickly. You can use your hands on the blocks if that helps you feel more relaxed. And our goal right now is using your breath to sink deeper into this and noticing the stretch in the front of your left hip. This is your hip flexor, your psoas. This is what gets tight when we sit. So opening this up is going to help relieve pressure on the knees, help relieving pressure on the back, and just in general, make your hips more flexible. As you're exhaling, you're allowing your hips to sink deeper into this. You're allowing the stretch to go a little bit deeper. And you might not actually move deeper into this pose, especially if you're tight, but over time and the longer you hold the pose, the easier it's going to be to open up. All right, from here we're gonna take it up a notch. I want you to lift your arms overhead and then lift your chest up, lean slightly back into a low lunge with a back bend. You'll notice that this increases the intensity of that stretch in the front of your left hip. If you feel pain through that knee, if it's just kind of uncomfortable, try to put more weight into your right leg. So really drive down through that right leg, pressing your right hip toward your right heel. And to get deeper into the stretch, you can lean further back. Just make sure that you're not allowing your head to collapse. Keep your neck nice and strong. Two more breaths here and typically, the, the older you are, the longer you want to hold the posture for. And just in general, the longer you can hold the posture, the more you're going to work into your flexibility. Just as long as you're focusing on slow, controlled breathing. All right, go ahead and relax your hands. We're going to switch sides. Nothing fancy to the transition, just going to the other side. Left leg forward now. Right leg is back, tuck your toes. Again, I do want you to try and not just dump your weight into your right knee. So I want you to be active through your legs. You might not be able to hover that right knee off the ground yet, that takes some time. But work on building strength in your left leg, shifting your weight to that left hip. If it's uncomfortable for the right knee on the floor, again, you can use a pillow, use a cushion there. All right, allow your hips to sink forward. Keep your shoulders, even keep your face relaxed. So your shoulders, your neck, your head, your face, everything is relaxed. We're just working on allowing your hips to sink into this. Flexibility doesn't happen by forcing it. We need to initially work on relaxing the muscles to sink deeper into it. And then with practice, we can work on developing more active flexibility. But to just get started, to ease into flexibility, we need to do it nice and easy, not by gritting your teeth and pushing. So again, I'm feeling a stretch to the front of my right hip here. I want to squeeze my hips, so I'm trying to squeeze the muscle in my butt. That's going to help me open up through my hip flexors more. Keep your chest nice and tall. Remember, ribs away from the hips, so I'm not collapsing down. I'm not folding forward. That's going to shorten your hip flexors, you want to keep them nice and long. All 
All right, and then moving on to the next step, lift your arms up, a little bit more active, lift your chest up, lean back slightly. Don't collapse through your low back, so you might think, okay, I'm gonna press my low back forward and arch. That's not something we wanna do for the spine. We wanna keep the lower back long. Think about bending from your mid back and up. So I'm staying strong through my hips, I'm staying strong through my core, my ankles are active. Squeeze my arms back, lift your chest up with the goal of opening up through your right hip flexors. Couple breaths here. This might feel challenging. Flexibility work does involve some strength. It's not just all passive stretching. And to actually increase your flexibility more, we do want to add a strength component. That way it lasts. Instead of being kind of like a band-aid or a, uh, a, quick, a quick change, this is going to be more of a lasting change when we add in strength. All right, go ahead and release. Nicely done there. From here, we're gonna move up to a standing position. This next exercise is called a pyramid stretch, and this is targeting your hamstrings. So, I'm gonna have you bring your right leg forward, pointing straight forward. Bring your left foot back, point it out 45 degrees. Now, if you have the blocks, this is where these are going to come into play. If you don't have blocks, you can probably find something at home that will substitute as a block. It could be a can of beans, it could be a water bottle, a foam roller, anything that's just gonna bring the ground up to you a little bit. So from this position, square your hips forward, bend into your right knee until your knee is over your ankle, reach down to your blocks or whatever you have. If you don't have blocks, you can put your hand on your thigh, and then I'm gonna have you pull your chest forward, keep your back nice and long, don't round your back, don't collapse your chest, and then straighten your right leg until you feel a stretch through the back of your right thigh. So you can see me kind of doing a supported pyramid stretch here. My left hip is pulling down and toward the right. I'm straightening my leg just until I feel the stretch in the back of my right thigh. Depending on your hip mobility, you might feel it as soon as you start to straighten it from that lunge with your, fright, with your, with your right leg. So you just want to straighten the leg until you feel a nice stretch of the back of your right thigh. The benefit of having those blocks is that you can relax a little bit more and that's going to allow your hamstrings to open up. Whatever you're using or not using here, I want you to make sure that you're keeping your chest pulling forward and up. Don't allow your chest to collapse. Don't allow your back to go into a C shape. Keep your back flat as close as you can to what you would be doing in a plank. If you have blocks and you still notice that your back is rounding, you can actually stack your blocks to make a more appropriate modification. Don't just mirror what I'm doing. You really want to focus on doing the stretch in a way that works for your flexibility level. All right, from here we're going to move into a supported airplane. So I want you to move the blocks in front of you. If you don't have blocks, I want you to find something that you can help use to balance. And then press down through your right foot. Lift your left leg off the ground. Keep in mind you can use anything here to help you balance. You can put your hands against a wall. You can use a couch. Um, anything that's stable. And I want to straighten through my right leg until I feel that stretch to the back of my right thigh. Point my left toes back if I want to get this leg active and pull your chest forward. This is a bit more challenging, but this is a very effective balance and stretch for your hamstrings. Again, you can use whatever you want to help balance here. You can put your hands on a coffee table in front of you. You can put your hands up on a couch. You can even hold onto the couch for dear life. The, uh, the balance aspect of this pose is not as important as the stretch in this context, in this workout. All right, and then go ahead and relax. Stand back up and switch sides. Starting with pyramid again, left leg forward. Right leg back, pointed out 45 degrees. Square your hips toward the front. Start with your knee bent over your ankle and your front foot. Again, you can put your hands on your thigh. If you have the blocks, great, then use the blocks. You can also stack your blocks if that's more comfortable and allows you to keep your back flat. As you exhale, straighten your left leg until you feel that stretch in the back of the left thigh. So, 
you might not have to straighten it that much. Maybe you have a really intense stretch in your left hamstrings already. It doesn't matter what I look like. It matters that you do the stretch in a way that works for your body. Don't just mirror me. So no matter what your mobility levels are, your back is going to be flat here. I'm using some sort of support so my hands can rest. And then I'm just straightening that leg until I feel the stretch in the back of my left thigh. Your shoulders, your neck are relaxed. And I want to breathe with control in and out of the nose. As you exhale, maybe you can straighten that leg a little bit more. Maybe you don't move any deeper into it. Either way, that's okay. One more breath here. And now moving into airplane. So you're going to put the blocks on either side of your front foot, just a few inches in front, using those blocks for assistance. Or remember, we can stack the blocks. We can use a coffee table, a couch, whatever you have. Now we're going to come up onto the front foot, lift your back leg, point the toes, straighten through your left leg until you feel that stretch through the back of your left thigh. Make sure that your back is flat. I want to make sure that I'm not collapsing through my chest and rounding here, but instead staying nice and long. And again, I want to hold on to whatever I can to make sure that balance isn't a factor here. So I'm holding on to a couch, I'm holding on to a coffee table, I'm holding on to Whatever you have nearby, maybe it's a piece of exercise equipment to help you balance. Couple breaths here, straighten that leg until you feel that stretch. You're also going to get tired through your core here, so make sure that you're bracing your abs, just like as if someone were gonna punch you in the stomach. That's what core engagement feels like. All right, and then come back up. Nice job there. Now we're gonna work on your groin. So I want you to grab a block, or if you're using a couch, using a coffee table, you're going to stand in front of that so you have something to rest your hands on. Put the block in the middle, directly in front of your hips. Take it into a wide stance. Turn your toes slightly out. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, bend toward your left. Keep your right leg straight. Keep the weight in your hips. So don't let your knee cave in. Don't shift forward. Keep that weight in the hips. Inhale back to the middle. Exhale, shift toward the other side. Feel that stretch in your groin. And then back to the middle and back to the left. So we're just going to keep this up. I want you to do five to ten per side here. As you go into this modified lunge, you should feel opening up through the inner thighs. And this is helpful because you're releasing the muscles that connect to your knees and your low back. So if you can lengthen these muscles, that's going to cause less strain on the knees. That's going to cause less strain on the back. It's also improving your overall mobility for squats, which are one of the most important, if not the most important exercise you can do for your lower body. So this is not only improving your performance, it's also going to improve just the way that you feel in general. So you won't have back pain as much. If you do it enough, you're not going to have knee tension. You're releasing those muscles. All right, back to the middle. And then from here, turn your toes to face straight forward. Bend your knees. Bring your hands to that block for a wide-legged forward fold. So here, I want you to focus on stretching through the backs of your thighs and your inner thighs. Bend your knees as much as possible so you can keep your back flat. Make sure that you're not making a C shape with your spine. And keep your chest pulling forward and up. I don't want you to collapse and, you know, round your back. I want you instead to keep your back straight and focus on that stretch through the inner thighs. Two breaths here. As you exhale, deepening that stretch. If you can, squeeze your quadriceps, even if it means you're really high up. That's okay. Just focus on that stretch through the hips. All right. And then stand up. We've got one more stretch to go. This is pigeon. And this is one of the best hip mobility exercises you can do. 
You're gonna start in kind of a 90-90 position. So a 90-90 position, I'm gonna have my shin parallel to the top of the mat. My other leg is completing this 90 degree angle. So two 90 degree angles. And then from here, I wanna do my best to square my hips forward. If this is difficult or if this is uncomfortable, bring your heel, your right heel in toward your butt. Now from here, I want you to bring your left leg back do your best to square your hips forward. And you might, you might have to use your hands at first to help do that. And this is, this does take a lot of mobility to do. So you might kind of more look like this initially. Maybe that leg doesn't go all the way back. The goal is to feel the stretch through the outer right hip. So this is one modification. And then we're working toward getting to the point where we can get that leg back. Just be careful with this knee. The other way you can do this, so if that works for you, stay there. The other way we can do this is a reclined figure four. So I'm gonna take it onto my back. I'm gonna cross my right ankle over my left knee, grab the back of the left thigh, flex the toes toward the shin so I'm keeping my left ankle active, and then lightly pulling the thigh in, externally rotating my right hip for the same exact stretch. Very similar, not exact, but very similar. I'm going to want to do this for at least 60 seconds. You can do this every day. You can do this two or three times a day. All right, let's switch sides. So again, I'm going to walk you through it, the pigeon initially, and then the, the modification. So you can start from that 90-90 position. This is just one way to get into it. This is the way that, that I sometimes teach it. So I'm going to have your left knee outside your hips. Your left heel could be closer to your groin if you're less mobile and then maybe to the point where it's parallel to the top of the mat. Most people aren't gonna be there, so bring your heel in a little bit. And then we can work on bringing our right leg back. If you can't get it that far back and you're already feeling a stretch through your outer left hip, that's great, we're good. Another thing you can do, which I didn't mention before, you can actually sit on a block with your left hip. So whichever hip you're stretching, you're gonna elevate that hip on a block and then I'll be able to get my right leg back a lot easier. Still getting that stretch, still proper technique, just a bit of a boost. This is just one example of making the pose work for your flexibility level. And then I wanna square my hips forward, use my upper body, putting the weight in my arms initially, and then over time, shifting the weight into the hips so that I can get that full stretch to the hips. Again, the modification, you're gonna do a recline figure four, crossing your left ankle over your right knee, grabbing the back of your right thigh, flexing your toes toward your shin, and externally rotating your left hip so that that left knee faces toward the outside. Try to keep your head, your neck, your shoulders as relaxed as possible here. Deep breathing to help relax those muscles, basically telling your uh, basically telling your nervous system, basically telling your fight or flight response that, hey, it's okay, we're fine here, let everything relax. And then relax. All right, so there we go. That's just a quick 15 minute hip flexibility routine for golfers who work their hips, uh, your quadriceps, your hip flexors, your, ham your hamstrings, your adductors, your abductors, your glutes, pretty much all the major muscle groups there. Um, also a fair amount of strength and core strength involved. So hip strength and core strength. So hope that was helpful. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure, be sure to subscribe. We put out great content every week. If you like the video, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for sticking around. I wanna invite you to join me for my free seven day challenge, Beginner's Yoga for Men. Seven workouts, seven days to help hold you accountable, to help you learn yoga and feel the results of your workouts. I'm also going to give you a free gift when you sign up, a head and neck essentials routine, 25 minutes to help your shoulders, your neck, your head feel great and relieve stress. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you on my challenge.